Hello everybody, I don't know if you can see me or hear me, but we are covering the finals of the Pepe and Dibis Invitational between a gentleman called Peter Swidler, who is on the black side here, and a certain Jan Shishtov Duda, who's playing with the white pieces. They have just begun and I am excited to watch this. Peter Swidler has been sort of pessimistic about his chances, which is not completely out of character for him, I would say. But still noteworthy how much respect he had for Jan Krzysztof Duda. So the game has started and Peter is now wondering what to do about this maneuver knight to f1 played by Mr. Duda. Let's grab a bit of the player's apologies to humanity if this will not look super pretty. I'm doing what I can here. There we have Mr. Swidler, who is, of course, very, very pretty. But my screen grabbing skills might not be as great as possible because I am taking this from the Spanish show and I have to make sure to cut around all the graphics there. So sorry if this does not look as great as usual. I might get company by the man who could or could not show up in the eternal enigma and one of the world's best blitz and rapid players. I'm not going to mention his name, but he might show up. It's a bit like a Voldemort situation, except he's not evil. Um, as for the position, Swidler with the black pieces. Looks like he's doing okay if you don't run into a quick d3 to d4 here. Knight to e4 played, bishop e7, I like that. Also keeping an eye on the g5 square if later we want to go f5. Well, the bishop on a7, especially after d4, can be a little out of play. And Duda goes d4, e takes d, knight takes d4, cd would just be structurally good for black, so he goes queen takes d4. And this is the type of position I was talking about after d4, where I guess you slightly, slightly prefer white because the black king is a little weakened by this pawn on f6. It's not very much and it's not going to be so easy for white to ask a question, but you still take white because the black structure is weaker here. I'm not sure what you do. Bishop d2, rook ad1 comes to mind. Knight g3 also comes to mind, but I would try to connect my pieces first with bishop to d2. If I were Mr. Duda, Panther Chess is asking, is Lawrence Boy joining? I don't know. And someone writes the unthinkable. I miss LT, which I guess stands for Lawrence Trent in this context, even though I am not quite sure. Not Fisher is saying, yeah, what is the purpose of wearing headphones? The purpose of wearing headphones is that should someone join us, I can communicate with them and hear them. Queen to D7 played. Rook a d1, rook a d8 shall happen. White is still slightly better. Bishop c1 back, I guess, now that the rook is in the game. There's no particular reason for this bishop to keep standing in the way on d2. But Jan Krzysztof taking his time here. We will see. Not Fischer saying, the player is not you. The players aren't wearing headphones, are they? Well, Peter is. I don't know, maybe he does it to block out this um, Chinese restaurant music that sometimes is playing through his flat mysteriously. I do not know, maybe it's a, it's a fashion choice. Bishop c1 played, 
So Duda finds the right moves, just not as quickly as me. <laughs> I should not say that. Duda is a fantastic Blitz player. His chest 24 Blitz rating, I do not think, reflects his true skill level. Um, he just probably has not played as much on this side, or his rating would be higher. What happens if I try to get more Duda? Can I do that? Not sure if this gives us a lot more Duda, but as we say in the business, a little more Duda is better than no more Duda at all. H4 plate, this is the typical strong player thing, like the position is quieting down, but I'm a strong player, so I will go H4, H5 and still create some play. It's something I've seen these strong players do quite often and still a theme I'm not very well worse. The bishop of 8 hits the knight on E4, so there's no time for H5 and it's a timely distraction. Duda's wondering if he can self-pin with rook E1. Maybe also threatening knight of six, even though that currently will still be met with gf, queen c6, rook takes e1, position shah. So I guess he, yeah, it doesn't have time to go h5. He goes rook to e2, tries to consolidate, and he is not incredibly fast here. Knight d6, nice move by Swiddler, defending the rook on e8, therefore forcing exchanges. And now, if anybody's better, it's black. Pantachez is asking, how old is Duda? Looks 15, he's 21. The man from Krakow, I said Gdansk on the show the other day, which was of course wrong. He is from, do you say Krakow in English? Do you say Krakowia? What's, what's the correct term? Plays an endgame for black indeed. I'm not sure how much it is, white should hold, but white is also way behind on the clock. So Peter, off to a good start here. There is increment. This is not like the Bantu Blitz Cup final yesterday. It's not 3-0. Those are 3 plus 2 games. So there will be no flagging. But of course, the site that is low on time still might miss that time to make, you know, decisions and all that good stuff. And here Peter has a past H-pawn, cementing his advantage. If he's going to be able to win... I'm not sure. It looks very, very promising because the bishop on h2 is also shut out of the game and he is trying to create a weakness on the queen side that he can then target. I would guess it's winning. The knight comes to e6, keeps an eye on f4, covers c5 and is now ready to go big game hunting on d4. Bishop f2 played. He doesn't go h3. That gives a check, I guess. Now he wants to include a tree. Nope. Mm, Swiddler still looking for the method to break through here. I thought he would just go king b6, king a5, yeah. And here he comes. Go after these pawns. King f2, king a5, king g3. There's knight e2 check. So very tough for Duda to target this h pawn. He has to go bishop h2. This just looks lost. Yeah, Swiddler's gonna win this. The c pawn just queens. So, Peter Svidler, even though he did not like his chances going into this very much, does take the lead 1-0 for our boy, Paul Borta. Good job by you. And people are saying he has a brutish look on his face. He is grim and determined today. Mr. Svidler, now with the white pieces, and he is facing... Jan Krzysztof Duda, a.k.a. Husarius, and Husarius' favorite weapon, the Petrov. It's always a little strange to see a young tactical genius like Duda play the Petrov. Then again, it's not only a sound opening, but also an opening that leads to fairly open positions, which often favors the tactical geniuses. Therefore, it's not as strange a choice. Still, you would 
think he's more of a natural, whatever, Nydorf, Sveshnikov type player than these Petrovs, which you can always play when you're Peter's age. Not that Peter does this. Then the one is saying, Peter playing better and better. Yep, once he he's warmed up, Peter Swidler is still very much a world-class player. Ain't no doubt about it. Our mystery guest is saying, cool, I will join a bit later. And for those of you who have a guess who the mystery guest might be, we do not know about his definition of a bit later. If he says, I will think a bit about this move. It could be two minutes. It could also be 90 minutes. Therefore, he might show up. He might not show up. We don't know. But if he does, we will be very happy. In the meantime, I believe this is still theory, some simplifications. I've seen this position. You play bishop d6 here. I would guess. And white is a little better because it's pieces. A little easier to get out. He controls the center for now. But it's very, very solid. Like rook b1. Not really threatening. Rook takes b7 because of knight to a5. But a useful move to make anyway. At some point, rook b7 might be a theme. And therefore, Jan Shishtov doesn't want to mess around, plays rook to b8 directly, covers the pawn. Queen d3 hints at some knight to g5 jumps. I guess we can stop that with h6 when I don't think black's position is in too much trouble. Jan Shishtov goes for queen f6, saying, if you want to go knight g5, I'll play queen g6, not to worry. And Svidler plays pawn to c4. b6 is necessary to prepare rook e8, so you can exchange rooks without b7. Hanging in the end, it still looks like Duda is pretty solid here and nothing. Direct is dropping. Cthulhu is saying he's a bit younger than Mr. Dodge. Who? Swidler? Maverick Pawn is asking why the board is flipped in the live stream. Because we are following Mr. Peter, at least the screen grab I'm doing is following him. Therefore, the board will flop after every game if that makes sense not sure that makes sense anyway the board will keep switching i hope you can keep track of who's white who's black right now peter Swidler on the white side of things as for the game h3 queen g6 yes Swidler has not achieved much this is your typical Petrov, where black does his Petrov thing, neutralizing white's initiative carefully, move by move, and then usually they draw. C5 is out, and on my phone I'm being told very excitedly, season 2 of Terrace House. What do you mean by season 2? Sorry, this, this is a priority, any Terrace House news. I have to address even when live on the air. Can't wait there. I got Mr. Jorn fun for raised into Terrace House. And I feel it's one of the meaner things I've ever done to him. BC, DC, Bishop to F8. Okay, I should be able to switch off this alarm but i'm not sure i am you know these these phones they're tricky little puzzles all right here we go in the meantime more exchanges have happened position still looks equal there's not enough targets i like g5 here to play f6 next but i'm also a putzer so i guess swidler is thinking about going c6 no do that things like me he goes g5 trying to consolidate his structure. Very proud of myself now. Um, King f1, now f6 will happen. And yeah, that consolidates the position. Knight g6, knight c6, there's no breaking through. Knight d3, king f7, or knight c6 first also looks perfectly fine for play. Actually, I'd start to think about making a draw with white here because the pawn on c5 could be a bit of a target if the king comes and Swidler rightly goes f4 exchanging some material. Now after g5, there's knight d5, probably with enough counterplay. Not sure what Duda wants. a6 certainly comes to mind. So this pawn after c6 is not hanging. So we could go like knight b7. You also think about knight e6 here. 
And if takes, takes. Then c6, a6, yeah, knight e6, he does. Um, yeah, so it has to be careful now. Knight d3 is correct. You can't allow the king to come to d5 so easily. And not quite sure how black makes progress. King e8, king d7, king c6. I was wondering if white can go c6 now, but he doesn't do it. King e2 played. King d7, there's c6. So probably, dude, I should move his a pawn. Probably to a6. No, he allows c6 check. But after that, it should just simplify. Yeah. Equal position now. The A pawn and the C pawn are neutralizing each other in the past pawn battles. I would push it with A4. But you could also make a case for a move like G4, stabilizing the king side first. Let's see how Swidler does this. G4 played. I'm good predicting moves today. Feeling myself. C5. Might be two C4. Not sure, maybe White still has to be a little careful. Probably not C4, Knight F2. This pawn is not gonna queen against the bishop on E3. Um, but we still want to be careful. Bishop A3 looks like a nice move. Shishtof taking his time again. Mr. Dochi with some insight. What's going on there? St. Peter is being smart, staying up on the clock. Where's the punchline? Is this a factual statement, Mr. Dochi? Some exchanges here. I still don't think the C pawn can queen. And Svidler also is doing the professional thing. You reduce the number of pawns as a defender here. So worst case scenario, you can give a piece for that C pawn and you still hold the draw. Hmm. <clears throat> Yeah, king c4, knight e5 repeats, king d4, then there's no knight d4 threat, so you can go h6 as he does, takes, takes. Now the bishop comes to g7, and it's a draw, boys and girls. Bishop g7, check. King c4, bishop takes c3. If you want to be a cynic, you don't need to, of course, you can go. What he does as well. Draw shall be agreed. Here we are, one and a half, half. First to six and a half wins, I should mention. And if it's six to six, then the next decisive game wins. Mr. Dodge is saying, I do one factual statement per show. And the Crippled King is saying, Jan on fire today, predicting all moves. I will do this new thing to just focus on the, on the chess game. Queen a4, bit of a sideline. Knight ft7 is a move here, but they usually play D takes C4, as Swidler does, Qu Queen takes C4, Bishop G7, Knight F3, castles, castles, not many options, Bishop E6, Bishop F5, but <clears throat> Swidler goes Bishop F5, Knight C3, Knight BD7. Not an expert here, Bishop D2 was a move, Bishop F4, Queen B3. Let's see what Jan Shishtov cries. Rook E1 intending E4 also comes to mind, but then Black goes Knight to E4. Not much happening. It's a position Swidler has some experience with. I think he beat Anish Giri once here from the black side. And rookie one knight e4 is indeed on the board. I guess Jan Shishtov is not a giant expert here in general. But okay, that's the only thing I know something about. So I always like to point out, yeah, he's not a theory expert, blah, blah, blah. But he's not a theory expert. He's just incredibly good at, you know, this thing called making chess moves. But yeah, Jan Shishtov taking his time. Clearly not that booked up here.
plays e3, which does not seem to go that well with rook to e1. So Fiddler plays queen a5 and knight h4, hits the bishop on f5, bishop e6, hits the queen on c4. Queen d3 looks logical when black would probably take on c3, but there are other options. You can move the knight somewhere. I guess you take though, yeah. Takes, takes. Now what? Some of like rook a d8. Keep your options open. Nope, he goes knight b6, he goes after the c4 square. The square these Grinfeld boys really like. The knight on h4 is a little out of place, so I guess you go knight f3 back, but black already has a pretty sound position here. Hmm. Also, Jan Shishtov once again, struggling on the clock. Knight f3. Uh, yeah. You can make these moves more quickly. And Svidler has a decision. I still like rook a d8, not committing to anything on the queen side. But there are many options. c5, now c5 weakens b7, I like it. Queen b5, queen a4. Curious to see how he's going to play this. He's also taking his time. Because rook c8. Interesting. Probably showing understanding. He prepares c5. Wants to use this rook on the c file, not the d file. Why should play e4? No other sources of play, really. e4. Then Svidla wants to go c5. But yeah, she still goes bishop d2, which strikes me as slow. Now knight c4. Don't like this move. Knight c4, knight g5. No, then we can take. I don't understand it. Svidler ignores it. Go, doesn't go knight c4. But c5, also logical. Yeah, I don't like white's position now, bishop d2. It's a strange move to me. Knight g5 looks tempting, but then c4, followed by queen g5, picks up a piece. Therefore, it's unclear what white wants to do here. He just doesn't have any active play. Still e4, I guess, but it feels really, really late now. Things are going Peter's way. E4 played, but yeah, why include bishop d2? It just made things so much clumsier. Bishop c4, queen e3. Now you could play move like bishop a6 to put the knight on c4. And he does go bishop a6, yeah. Intending to jump. I'm weirdly attracted to queen g5, hitting e7 and not allowing cd4 because of queen takes a5, but I'm not quite sure. What to do after bishop f6? Maybe repeat moves. Queen h6, bishop g7. Nietzsche. Now he goes queen f4. Mm, less cool than queen g5. Knight c4 and e5. Probably needed to not lose material here, but also double edged positionally this e5 move. So they're doing well. Could go rook c d8. You could just take the bishop. Probably you just take the bishop. And queen d2, cd, cd, play the end game. Rook f d8, only black can be better. f6 is also there. Not sure it's much, but certainly pleasant for black. Panther Chess wants to know when is Lawrence Boy Invitational starting? I don't know. It has to, would have to be an open tournament. No? If Lawrence invites all his boys to play, that's going to be thousands and thousands of players. Everyone who Lawrence Strand has ever called my boy being allowed to play. Not sure. That could ever happen. Rookie three. Yes, rook f d8. But no, he goes rook c2 first. And Shishtov once again struggling on the clock. What's with the clock, my dear friend? Should we 4, rook c3. Yeah, black is better. The question is how much better. But it is what these Grunfeld players are dreaming of. End game, you have the bishops, you have the queen side majority. White already committed to e5, so the pawns aren't really running in the center. It's just, you know, fighting for survival here for Jan Shishtov. Should be four. It's not nice. Rook takes. <clears throat> yeah, bishop c4, clearing the way for the a pawn. 
I guess you have to take and go king e3. But you must suffer. a5. He probably wants bishop d3, trying to exchange the bishop at all costs. Bishop d5, bishop e4 back. Maybe Jan Shishtof holds this because of his active king. And because I don't see how you can keep the light square bishops. a5 played, bishop d3 played, bishop d5, bishop e4 back, yeah, as mentioned. Looks like we're headed for a repetition here. And yeah. It felt like there was more in it for Peter, but do that just in time to secure the draw to one. Swidler shaking his head. He's also a bit upset. He did not push harder there. But life goes on, Peter. You're still in the lead. Feggy's asking, does Lawrence have a copyright on your boy? He does. 1c4 played by Mr. Swidler. Now with the white piece again. Knight to f6, knight c3. E6, E4, the so-called Mikenas, as we say in Spanish, Mikenas as Sukenas. This is a dangerous line for Black. He has to know what he's doing here. And Swidler playing them theory lines. D4, Jan Krzysztof taking a moment here, trying to decide between B6, C5, and maybe E5. I believe those are what the theory boys do here. He goes E5. This can lead to very sharp play after knight of three, e d, bishop g5, queen e6 check, bishop e2. When you cannot take on c3 because of queen d8 checkmate. So you play a move like bishop e7. And you hope for the best. d3 is also legal, but very, very risky. d3 short castles. It's one of these lines that you normally don't want to go anywhere near. Knight c6, I believe, is a line as well. And once again, Jan Shishtov seems to be caught a bit of guard. Jan Shishtov, learn them theories. Mine River saying some bad GM in his video series recommended B6. So you're calling me a bad GM? It's very hurtful. Um, anyway, this is not what happened. Bishop E7, as mentioned, it's one of the main lines. CD castles, Bishop G5, Knight G5, Queen G6. I didn't like this for Black this much. I think you can hold, but you sort of have to suffer. And I think instead of Queen G6, you're supposed to go Queen F6 now, because now Queen D2. Some bishop d3 maybe, f4 could also be a move. Yeah, Peter goes f4. This looks a little dangerous for Mr. Husarius. <laughs> Knight to c6 plate. So many options for white d5. I guess he just wants knight e7, bishop d3, bishop f5. Swidler just goes queen d2 to bring the king. If bishop f5, he will play g4. Still looks pretty unpleasant for black to me. Rook d8, d5. He goes rook e8. That's maybe a smart move. But still, it feels like it's hard to really get the pieces going. And now Peter goes d5, um, saying that knight e7 is a less natural fit for having the rook on e8 already. Fishmaster saying, actually, Jan, I like that you're honest about your flaws. What flaws? Eight one zero six zero nine. with a very unifying message. What is it with all that people? You should call them you people. That hits the, brings the point home even harder. Coming here, telling us how bad everything here is. I do not get the point. Don't like it? Great. Go where you like it and let us enjoy. That is a great point, but eight one zero six zero nine. what you don't know is many people are forced to be here. Therefore, those people have the right to complain. Those who are here deliberately, I agree with you. But 
the many, many people we forced to watch this on a daily basis as sort of a clockwork orange type treatment, they at least should have the right to complain. Mm -hmm. Panther just saying, Jan, in a good mood today. Great to see. What are you talking about? Um, what's the position like? Has Jan Shishtov managed to get the pieces out? I was not sure about this d5 move, knight e7, rook f1. What are you doing, Piotr? I'm never sure if it's Piotr or Petr. His passport, true story, is, says Petr, P E T R. But I believe a lot of the Russians call him Petr or Petya as. Grishuk, who might or might not join, told us about. Well, I'm now that I, I've been told I have flaws, I'm very self-conscious about my hair day and these things just being all over the place. If there's a problem that I can't fix, we can do it in the mix. Swidler is not, this looks like a Petrov now, somehow do that transport from into Petrov. He's not putting as much pressure, pressure as I expect him to. He, Jan Shishtov has very much consolidated, and in these positions, once you consolidate, you can sometimes be better, because these so-called hanging pawns can become targets, like c4 can be weak, or you can mm, go c6, undermining d5. I'm not sure if he wants to repeat moves here. I'm Knowing Peter, he hates his position now, and he's happy to repeat moves, so he will probably go back. Yep, but I'm not sure if that is an acceptable outcome for both players. Come on, Peter, who are we kidding? We all know that you're fine with the draw at this stage. Well, you should be, something's gone wrong. Um, it looks like they both are. So they repeat the position thrice. Swidler still in the lead, two and a half to one and a half. What's with all these numbers as usernames? Jan, don't be self-conscious of anything. You're the best looking GM I've ever seen. How many GMs have you seen? Have you seen Jordan Fun for Race? He's so hot. Um, Bishop G4 played. This is an old pet line of Swidler. Queen A4 check, Knight C6. Knight e5 is one option. I think rook b1 is a move. Queen b3 is a move. Rook c1 castles queen b3. All kinds of lines. But probably Swidler is relying on the fact that Jan Shishtov, who's a very young man, was not following the theoretical debates that people had here. I think Vitugov maybe with white in like 10 years ago with Mr. Swidler. Bishop g4. His sideline, which I guess he reserves for Blitz and Rapid these days. But if you don't know how to deal with it, it's not stupid. I used to play as myself, which is obviously a seal of quality. Queen e2, now you can go cd, cd, knight c6, rook t1, short castles, d5, queen a5. This was supposed to be fine for black back in the days. And I would guess... <clears> hmm. <throat> hmm. Sorry, got something stuck in my throat. Not the first time I said that sentence. I would guess that Peter will go for this too, yeah. He goes CD, CD, knight c6. Probably rook d1 will happen. Then short castles. And after d5, you have this queen a5. Little trick. Following the famous, famous game. Horvat Gustafsson. Some Hungarian tournament, like 2001. Was a great drawn shortly after. Danger more five is saying Jordan may be hot, but Korobov has the best hair. Do not disagree. Gapon says Nikolas Lube breaks the hotel meter. He is not a GM though. Pantochas saying, Where the hell is your coffee, Jan? Yeah, I wish I had a coffee. One year Len is saying, Jan Yanni, how are you doing? Can I call you that? No, please don't. It's just creepy and wrong. Mr. Dodge is saying Korobov has the most hair anyway. That is true. He has a very full head of hair. Hmm. The Ukrainian fro.
we have reached these reasonably quiet positions where the rook on d1 is a little misplaced. I had to go there to defend the pawn on d4, but generally in these positions you want the rook on b1, the other rook on d1, to, you know, at least annoy the black queen side a little bit. Therefore, these things are supposed to be quite all right for black. d5, you always get some bishop c3, knight b4 counterplay. Therefore, it's, it's pretty all right. Love is for after the game. I used to have a t-shirt that said that. Um, wow, one minute time difference. Yeah, Duda has been slow. And he's also, he's being outclassed in the openings, which I talked about this in the Anton match. If you don't put pressure on Peter in the openings, then he's hard, hard to deal with, even for the best, the youngest, the fastest out there. And so far, Duda has needed a lot of time keep up in the opening phase, which is good news for Mr. Paul Borta. Knight c4 is tempting now, but would be a blunder. Bishop takes, rook takes, bishop g7, king g7, knight e5. So you need to do something else. I like this d5, bishop d4 by the dude. And I'm not 100% sure about knight a5. Yes, knight b4 was not going anywhere, but I would have thought about it. Maybe Svidla did think about it. He decided, eh, it's nonsense. Can't rule that out. So what do you do now, b5? If you allow bishop g7 and some knight e5, rook b1, you might actually suffer here. He does go b5. Not sure. Lando 1 is saying, so it looks comfortable, does he? He... I think at this point he probably thinks he's lost. He usually, if there's something going wrong he thinks is lost but he also knows that he underrates his position so he's aware of his own contempt for his own position and it does not affect his play that much it's an interesting phenomenon which i also struggle with slightly it's a strange character trait that you know you underestimate your position still you do it in every game again and you envy the people that are the other way around, that overestimate their position so much because their life quality is so much higher. They spend a lot of time thinking that they have a great position, while the likes of Swidler and me spend most of their time at the board miserable, hating their position and their, themselves. It's not necessarily connected to your results that much, even though I think overestimating a position gives you better results, but certainly connected to your level of enjoyment for the chess games you play. So knight f3, knight d6, Jan Shishtov really taking his time here and Svidler found a nice little maneuver to bring this horsey back into business. Bishop d3 played. Do you go knight c4? I guess he never wants knight c4, bishop c4, even though after pawn to f4 could become more of an option. Still a bit unpleasant for black. Bateman47 saying Duda getting outplayed. I'm not so sure. I think Duda might be better here. Bishop g7, bring the king. These pawns in the center are pretty powerful, and the bishop on e8 does not do that much here. Swidler, of course, a lifetime of experience in all these Grunfeld structures. Mm. But I'm not quite sure who's up playing whom. Rook c3. Might have to change my mind soon. Also, Jan Shishtov, no time left on the clock. Why is he so slow? What happened? Now there's f6, knight c4 themes, bishop b5. Yeah, now he's getting outplayed. Uh-oh. All these pieces creeping in. Creepy, creepy pieces. Rook d4. What do you do? a4? b3? So many options. I kind of like b3, a b rook b3, then trying to, you know, put a rook on b2, push the e pawn. Svidla goes knight e3. Duda immediately replies with d6. Unleashes the d pawn dragon. Um, and Svidla will probably take on a2, but does he have more than a draw there after d7? Let's calculate. Rook g2, king h3. Or take first, rook g2, king h3. Rook f2. Doesn't look like more than a draw. <clears throat> King g3. And 
deviate. Will he give the perp? Nope. Actually, Jan Shishtov deviates. Goes for the win, but that's a blunder. Rook a3, king g4, h5, and you get checkmated. Wow, that was an out of character blunder for Mr. Duda, and he loses another game. There we see him shaking his head. That even with such low time, you see him do very rarely such a sharp deviation. And that means Peter Svidler goes up 3.5, not 3.6, to 1.5. Two point lead for the Switzer. A boy. So Peter, with the two-point lead, and Jan Shishtov Duda having to come back. So it goes back to another old favorite of his. Not a very impressive line, but a line he has good memories of. This King's Indian attack with a slow pawn to c3. And... He won a nice game against Sega Kayakin in the World Cup Finals 2015 here. After, I think it was the first game actually, he took a 1-0 lead, then a 2-0 lead, then Lawrence Trent jinxed him, and the rest. We shall not bring up on this program there. Svidler looks up into the sky. Hmm. <clears throat> And Jan Shishtov probably decided he should play a little faster this time around. Well, Peter is taking his time. Yeah, this opening did not work out well for Peter. He's just slightly worse now, in my humble opinion. He has the c5 square for the knight, but knight c5, there's always some knight takes d4 tactic. And this isolated pawn is not such a pretty sight. So let's say a6 or even pawn to b4. Maybe you go pawn to b4 followed by a5. Just grab some space. Yeah, I think black is very fine. And Shishtov still taking a lot of time, though. Those are three minute games. What's with all the thinking? They're both mind-numbingly slow, and especially for a young blitz whiz kid like Jan Shishtov Duda. You do not expect such things. This guy is the 2018 Vice World Champion in Blitz Chess, where he had a tremendous battle with Magnus Carlsen, both completely destroying the field over the whole day. Hmm. And now they have exchanged the b5 pawn for the d4 pawn which i guess strategically speaking is good news for peter because he's not in danger of being stuck with that stupid weakness. Hmm. 
Hmm. The question is, how about them tactics? Knight a4, b3, knight c3. This looks more like the dude that we know. Being tricky. You have to play rook d2 to cover b2. And what's taking so long, Peter? You got to keep that pawn, rook d2 played. Maybe rook cb8. Queen f6, same idea, b3, knight c3. Yeah, I would guess you look for some counterfishing with queen a6. He goes b3 first, now he wants to go queen a6. Knight c3, queen a6 using this loose rook. That's why I want rook cb8 instead. So this counterattack is not there. And it should leave Peter still very much in business. Bishop back to g2 after some rook move. What are we discussing? Still looks. <clears throat> the Dark Knight is saying Jan is really good looking for a guy in his 40s. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That means a lot. <laughs> Why do you think I get to do all this commentary? Because of my chess skills? Because of the German accent? It's the looks, baby. It's the looks that pay the books. Um, knight c3. Queen a6, rook c7, bishop g2 happened. Yeah, as I said, white should be okay now, but this knight on c3 is still very active and dude is trying to seize control of the center with rook to d4. I guess you take and play something like queen a5, continue to ask questions. Rough equality, like white has a better minor piece for the structure, but the black pieces are very dominantly placed in the center. So maybe in a blitz game with this time you actually take black because of the potential knight forks. And trickery, so knight d1. I'm not sure. Stakes are high. I've been told it's not stakes is high. Who would have thought? I listened to a lot of De La Soul as a kid, so I was convinced it's stakes is high. But the grammar experts out there have taught me about this thing we call plural. e4 covering the square but there is no direct mating threats now he goes for queen a checkmate ideas f5 queen e8 or no you go, you go rook c8 back you wanna you wanna keep it tight down there on that back rack no he goes g6 allowing bishop g6 that's a surprise to me that looks very dangerous um who mates here first queen e8 check was also that so queen d2 ah he misses he misses queen d5 check, or Duda spots it, I should say. That's a very nice find, and now black is winning. Double attack against the rook on e3. And the um, bishop, and there's something happening on the line. Mr. Grishu, can you hear me? How are you today? Uh, I'm good, I'm good watching. Uh, okay, some chances to survive for Peter, I guess, but... Not so big. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, his hope is time travel, but. Before we can take. But Duda is very good with seconds, so. Have you seen a bit of the match? Duda's been very slow. I was surprised how slowly he's been playing. No, but he's quite slow, yeah. So that's he's... his style, yeah? He just becomes fast later? Is that typical? Yeah, I, I think they have very similar styles with Artemis. They both. Uh, play very good with seconds, but at the beginning they play quite slowly. Okay, this is resignable. The rook is trapped on a8 and Peter resigns. So his lead is down to a plus one, three and a half, two and a half. Oh, okay, it's still a good start. Uh, of course. I mean, uh, and actually yesterday Artemiev won a big online tournament on chess.com. 
never heard of it. <laughs> um, knight f3, d5, d4 played. Bishop f5, that's... That, for some time that was Neponishi's repertoire. No, you play the Grunfeld against 1d4, and if they go knight f3, you go d5, d4, bishop f5. It's yeah. intriguing. What is this position? This looks like some weird queen c2. No, I think it, that's how it goes after knight h4. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think there is some. I mean, there is some theory here. It's, it's not a random position, basically. I think they're both out of book. So even if there is theory, they won't know it. Bishop d2. How do you recapture? Yeah, it looks a bit like Nimzo Indian, but white will have two extra bishops. Yeah. So. Looks a bit like, what do you call this? D4, D5, C4, Knight, C6, Chigorin or something. Sometimes you get weird positions. Like Chigorin, right? but also very much like this Queen C2, Nimzo Indian, mm -hmm. D5, take E3, C5, A3, or Bishop D2, Bishop C3, B3. As well, I think in uh, Blitz it's very nice for Black this position because you know, first of all, knights are famous to be strong in, in Blitz, but also Black is a little bit ahead in development, so White needs to uh, finish his development first and spend some time. <coughs> so, I would be three. Uh, maybe knight e4 makes some sense. Ah, no, sorry. It's the blunder. Please focus, Sasha. This is important commentary. Don't blunder any pawns or tricks. <laughs> Only pieces. I only pieces are okay. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. Then queen d7 looks reasonable. Mm. Castles doesn't care. But now you're worse, no? Take everything? Yeah, but uh, again, for blitz, you know, it's like take d5, take f5, let's say bishop e2, rook f8. And, you know, you will need to be aware every move about some. Tactics. Uh, even Magnus uh, yesterday was blundering lots of such tactics. So. What did you think about that match yesterday? Uh, the thing was, I was playing this uh, tournament at the same time that Artemis won, that you never heard of, and uh, uh, so it was hard to focus. I mean, I, I looked at all the games but not all of them online uh, no i would recommend if you have some time to look at the magnus feed i was doing commentary i was listening but i've never seen him like that because okay sometimes he tilts but it felt like there was really doubts and it felt like he didn't think he had much of a chance or so this is my interpretation when they were down to 30 seconds so it was strange to see and ali reza was so strong yeah but actually you know in his matches let's say against the grand Delius, he was just winning everything with uh, when they both had uh, half a minute. Yeah, I mean, he was worse or even lost in like half of the game. Uh, but then with 30 seconds, he would just win every game. And here it was not like that. Uh, because, yeah, I think there is clearly uh, top three in bullet. Uh, okay, so now knight takes it. I don't know. Knight no, 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 no. no, six, we can still take. Yeah. Uh, I mean, top three is clearly Nakamura, Magnus, and uh, Ali Reza. I mean, I would really love to see just uh, three players tournament in Bullet. But the problem is that some of them, you know, play on different platforms. Yeah, so it's politics. Yeah, yeah, this is a sad thing for me. And. Uh, yeah, but I, I heard uh, there was a huge match. They were playing for four hours of bullet uh, some week ago or something, and uh, Ali Reza won. Ali Reza was... won like 103 and a half to 90 and a half, something along those lines, and 
on League Chess I play yeah, a big so match. Yeah, so again, she's getting slightly stronger in, in the bullet. And uh, so in this, how to say, in this area, Magnus didn't have advantage. And also he could not get uh, some slow strategical position. It was always some tactic going on, mm. which favored Ali Reza as well. But still it was uh, just, it came down to the wire. Uh, it was just, uh, he, he lost minus one. Of course, but he's Magnus. So I thought Ali Reza would put up a fight, but it would be like eight and a half, five and a half for Magnus or something. But it was just, yeah on equal terms i was very impressed with Ali. Oh, of course it's it's uh, an upset i think it's i think the biggest upset in the history of those online matches is duda losing to mayor in banter cup <laughs> no, I, I are you trying to out humble peter <laughs> come on what duda losing to to you you said to mayor mayor Ah, Mayer. to Meyer. I understood to me. I was very confused. No, 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 no. Ah. But he didn't lose to me. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, to Meyer, yeah. It, it okay, was... but Meyer is very fast. He had some good results. Yeah, yeah. 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 But so, it, uh, but I watched the games. It was like at the end they was they were like five five, and Duda had one and a half minute against thirty seconds in every game and very nice positions, and then he would just lose three out of three. And yeah. yeah, maybe Peter studied that match in his preparations for today. How's the position now? You should be fine. No, he managed to get rid of one of the bishops. Now on d6 is good. Like yeah, better. Sure. You, I don't really like g6. I think you should be more. Uh, I mean, less modest with your pawns. Push no g5 h5. Lots of them. Yeah, just go g5 h5. You know, king to f6. But okay, this is also. I mean, now King E7 will it's run F4, into yeah. F4, yes. So. Or even maybe Rook G5 made a lot of sense instead of King E7. But this is yeah, very nice as well. Now maybe King will go to D4 somehow. Not coming. Maybe knight b7, knight d6, king d4, yeah, something like that. Looks horrible. With seven seconds, you just lose a pawn. Mm, most of people will, but let's see. Magic. What is this? No. But what is this? No. Why, why not king d4, rook d1, check, king d3? Checking is good. Maybe a five. Still pushing, no, not a five ninety three. Still horrible for the team. Yeah, you know, I really didn't like the game in which Peter let uh, Jan Christoph of the hook in this Grunfeld end game. Yeah. He had big advantage with two bishops, and then he just made the draw in a few. Okay, now maybe king d4, king c5. I don't know, he, he looks afraid to play king d4. But he's still doing very well. Okay, now I guess it's very close to winning. Maybe even... It's crushing, no, even f3 already? I guess g3. Yeah, he should win. If mm -hmm. okay, finally King D4. <laughs> Rook F2 resigns now. No, yeah. King E3. Wow. Rook F1. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well played, Mr. Swidler. Up two again, four and a half, two and a half. But you know, this self isolation is very good for his chess uh, because yesterday in this tournament uh, he also played very well. He beat me, beat Nakamura, was completely winning against Caruana. And uh, in this tournament he's doing very well. So. <clears throat> 
He's very, very good at chess. It's upsetting. I don't know how he keeps doing it. At his age, he never studies any chess. He's still incredibly strong. No, I think he does study. Yeah. I know, I'm being slightly facetious, but yeah. I'm sure there are others who study even more. I always struggle with this topic because I used to say, no, it's all about putting in the work, the 10,000 hours and so on. But some guys are just more gifted than others at chess, no? Like, what, where's your stand on talent versus, you know, work? No, of course, of course, some are more gifted than the others. But, you know, nowadays it's, it's, it's very strange because you work, work, and, you know, it, almost no result because there is almost no science left in this work, you know, it's just, uh, you know, till you find to find some new tricks or something, I mean, because for me the most interesting thing in this preparation is, you know, scientific aspect, you know, to really, so I really like when there are problems in some line for black because it's so unusual now, so at least some, you know, aspect uh, and not just find some moves and then remember lots of computerish lines with that. Uh, I think what Peter is doing is very strange in this game. It looks like he's playing a bad version of this. Or well, maybe this he just wants to... But why do you go h3 and then go for this? <laughs> maybe he will meet rook f8 by taking and playing f4. Okay. And actually black pieces are a bit awkward. Maybe sure it's actually... What? Why did he have to go FE? Why not start with Rook of H then? F4. No, no, he didn't, but I think anyway, take and F4. Uh, there he comes. Yeah, actually, I was wrong. It actually looks quite nice. Also, A6 is completely... Yeah, you can have a go, or it's much harder to get here, so it's like a tempo wasted. No, I agree with yeah, you yeah, about yeah. the opening science. Chess was more fun in the days of like Fritz 8, when computers were still strong, but you could guide them to some positions and trick them. You couldn't just switch them on and they show you how to equalize. No, of course, when there were laptops, you know, no, 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 this uh, big, you know, 64 uh, threads uh, computers, you know, which give you depth 40 in a couple of minutes, I mean, it's I remember once I was analyzing some anti-Moscow, like some 15 years ago, and uh, I put my laptop for uh, for the night for analysis. It reached some depth 26, which I was extremely excited about, yeah. and it finally showed that white wins in some light, which I could never convince him by just, you know, in putting the moves, but by putting for the whole night, uh, it was, you know, huge for me. And now it's laughable, you know. No, it just shows zero, zero. Yeah. No, those no, were the also, days. Yeah. Anti-Moscow, Grunfeld in like the mid 2000s. The golden age of chess for opening nerds. Yeah. How's Peter doing? He took with a knight now, I don't know, some knight to e5, is there a trick? He has lots of time, so this is good. And he has lots of tricks as well. He has maybe knight e5, he wants knight takes c7, yeah? Yeah. Also maybe or, cd. <laughs> maybe he's much better, I don't know. If bishop d5, you go ed and whatever. Yeah? He goes knight e5. And maybe just uh, just castle after that. Now, anyway, he can castle if he wants. But then, yeah, I think white is just much better. But it's tempting to play knight takes d7, but I don't know what what's do this plan. But, Cause this CD. one I thought queen takes d6 and at least 
some hope for black. I mean, I guess you can go knight c7, but no, you are the pawn up. But... Well, maybe you think it's safe with the match situation. Pawn up end game. What's not to like? Um, also, can we take another pawn? I guess g5 is annoying. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, you can play ultra safe, like maybe rook hf1, g5, knight, fd5. And Here I comes. guess that's what he's going for. Knight d3. I mean, knight d3, yeah. I'm... Yeah, now knight d3, king d3, and if rook f2, white can take and play rook c2. Be in complete control again. Beautiful. Knight c6. <clears throat> Peter really not in the mood to allow any tricks. King e3, stepping out of any checks. Yeah. Queen side still collapsing. No, when he plays, when he's in good form, he plays extremely practically. <clears throat> he gave so many speeches that he was completely without any hope against either Duda or Artemyev. Not quite sure what his excuse will be, should he win this. Oof. King comes. Okay. It's strange. In, in previous game, he, he was so shy to go ahead <laughs> with King his team, and now, for no reason. Okay, last tricks, Rook C6 track. D8, whoa. He's winning. <laughs> yeah, he's winning. Do that down to seconds and yeah, it's over. Wow. Uh -huh. Okay. So now it's uh, how it's called? Five and a half, two and a half. Quadruple match point. I can't count. One, two, three. Yep. <laughs> That's a lot of match points. Yeah. And Svidler, he looks so businessy. There's no emotions on his face. It's like, I know you're a student of basketball when LeBron had this game six in Boston. I don't know what year it was, okay. where he just played with this complete stone face and crushed everybody. It's the same thing. I've never seen Peter like that. Literally, he looks like, like Robocop or something. No, no, yes, it's like his tournament, uh, the tournament of his life. Yeah, never seen anything like this. Because normally, you know, he's walking around, he's chatting to people and like uh, enjoying a casual chess game. Now it's just laser focus. Uh, yeah, that's why maybe Blitz is good for him because he cannot walk and chat. And so what, what was this game? B3, E5, Bishop E2, Knight C6, E3, Knight F6. Duda's just trying to get a random game. <clears throat> Charlie, Peter yeah, with I'm the Bishop on G7. I'm not in love of his position at all. Which ones? Peter's, no? Yeah. Yeah, it looks very risky strategically. Now even, I don't know, Bishop D4, maybe. So Queen C1, no, he goes Rook C1 like a normal person. Rook C1, at least now Black can play A4. Yeah. Or A4, maybe he wants CD5, CD5, Bishop E5, and then B A4. Hmm. Because, I mean, if you manage to exchange this A pawn, it will be quite a big achievement for Black, at least. Uh, he's not much worse after it. Yeah. But if White manages to take it, it's another story. Yeah. Lawrence Strand, in the meantime, is on the phone trying to congratulate Peter for his victory, but he's not getting through yet. Have you heard that story? You, you probably heard, yeah? Like in 2015, when Peter was up 2 0 against Kayakin in the World Cup final, Lawrence Strand he tweeted, Congratulations, Peter, for winning the World Cup. And Peter has never forgiven him. But did he think that it's two games or 
he thought then, it was two games, so he thought it was uh, over, okay. I believe. Then, then it's an excuse. Yes. So he was just being uninformed, not not evil. We think, but we're not sure. Uh-huh. Okay, so now even something like take and rook c6, and, and then you want queen a1 looks quite funny. Here's bishop c3, we do a4, I guess. So he just goes, for, what is she doing? BA, take the pawn. Okay, but now there are some bishop d3, and, uh, okay. Okay, I guess I'm not guessing Peter's moves today. So. Mm -hmm. I find Duda is a hard guy to guess his moves. Peter, you know, he's more classical. But Duda, I'm very often surprised by his moves. Of course. Okay, now White wants to win an exchange, so yeah, Rook goes somewhere. Do you play C5 here with White? I don't know, C5 or CD5, it's hard to say. Mm. CD looks My nice instinct too. would be to play CD5. Uh -huh. CD5 and then maybe knight b6. Ah, okay. Or if you can, maybe knight b3 immediately. Now some knight a5. Queen a3, he goes CD, and after CD, you want knight a5, eh? Or maybe just take on c7, but. Looks bad. <laughs> Yeah, that's why I wanted to take uh, early on d5 to just avoid, you know, so you don't need to even think about knight d5. <clears throat> now, if king g7, even rook c6, no, we have a check on a1 if we need it. So he's, yeah. he has to mix it. He goes knight e3. Oof. This looks lost. Yes. In Russia, do you call this bishop on g7? Do you call it the Gufeld bishop as well? We were taught yeah, it's the Gufeld do. bishop. Yeah. You do as well. Yeah. Yeah. Peter's still fishing here. Mm, yes, fishing is <laughs> a good word for this position. Uh, I mean, I guess queen f1, bishop d3, queen d1 is the easiest to avoid a uh, pin after rook d8. Uh -huh. So I guess now he will have to go bishop d3, queen d1, bishop e2 maybe, uh, just to, to exchange those bishops. Queen a2 takes the pawn. Okay, so now you either play rook b1 and lose an endgame or take pawn and get mated in the middle game. So ah, he went rook bd8. <laughs> no, knight e3, what is the idea? Ah, bishop d3. Knight e3 to prepare queen e1. Knight e5 play, rook d2. I don't know, it doesn't feel hopeless yet. Bishop c6, rook d8. Yeah, but I would not play knight e5. I mean, it's maybe better move objectively, but just play knight e3 and uh, just, how to say, accept resignation. Should be five. So much drama. And I would play h3 as early as possible. Because now some bishop c2, it yeah. gets, ah, bishop c4. Bishop c2 played, ah, bishop c4 is still control. No, maybe just take on a4, check, king of 8 Okay, so maybe you will play knight, take f7, but I don't know, there were no reasons. Then maybe black can take on c4. Bishop c4, oh, okay. queen a3, oh, ah, he wants it? queen c1. But knight f7, yeah, queen c1, knight d8, whoa. Okay. 
So maybe queen a4 was more interesting. Knight f7, queen c4. Uh, ah, yeah, and now Peter resigns. Maybe queen a4 was still a chance. As you mentioned here, takes and queen c4. So Duda wins one. Okay, so now. Triple match point. To finish the match. But bishop b5 check does not look like an attempt to finish the match necessarily. Svidler's facial expression has not changed one bit. There was no head shaking, nothing. Still Terminator mood. It's good. <laughs> Krakus is asking, did anybody heard about the situation when Jan was in love with Lawrence? What do you mean was? Still am. Um, they broke up at the beginning of Chess 24 was a love story among them. But he left me. He left me for Fabiano. I was hoping would be eternal with Lawrence. But then he went to bigger and better things to manage Fabiano Caruana. Teach him about the big wide world. So it's not my fault. And now I think instead of knight f6, the main line is bishop e6, queen c6 check, bishop d7. And draw. There are yeah. a lot of draws like this. I know all these move repetitions, but probably not what Husarius wants in this situation. And uh, what does Husarius mean? I have no idea. Husar? Isn't that some, some warrior or something? I'm not sure. I don't know. <coughs> Chat, what, what does Husarius mean? But actually, I don't know. Black's position look very nice. So, what what was the point of Black always taking this draw with Bishop e6? There must be some uh, some very concrete reason. But I don't see. I cannot see it. Mm. No idea either. I just know the draw. I was happy. Um, because now I think Black is at the very least not worse. I mean, definitely. Okay, I guess. It's better or not? 92 d5 bishops? No, I mean, not just better, but much better. Because also Queen c2 was very unfortunate, I guess. Oof. So, Peter. Uh, and. Right, let's not call it a comeback, but if Duda wins this one, we have some tension. We'll be five and a half, four and a half. No, lots of tension. Okay, Grandmaster, get... sorry, go ahead. Uh, take, take, okay, this, okay, maybe this is better, but there was interesting idea to take on d5, bishop d5, queen f5, and then if you take on g2 to play f3. Oh, but I can take all these other things too. <laughs> No, yes, maybe. I don't know. I just uh, maybe. Because I was thinking how to avoid uh, just uh, immediate loss. Gotcha. Grandmaster Misha Pop is explaining that Hussars were famous elite forces in Hungary and Poland later. Oh. And, uh, there you go. Thanks, Misha. And Grandmaster Eric Lobron also joining us on the chat. How are you doing, Mr. Yardbird? Here what happened. He took a pawn, e4, knight b6, bishop f3, rook c1. No. Black is close to winning, yeah? No, of course. <clears throat> yeah. Peter might resign here. This is a Peter resigns situation usually. No, but push the bombs. Why? Why B four, A four? Can not. Why? 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 Do you go back with your knight? Now you can. Visit. And he does. Five and a half, four and a half. Duda wins two in a row. Almost back in business, but Swidler has two match points left. Yeah. We're also told that Husarius is a World of Warcraft character. Ah. Okay, with the young guys, it looks more to the point. So it goes bishop g7. I was told you're supposed to go d5 here before. White goes for this knight c3, rook c1, e3, knight e2. No, I think it's totally fine for that. 
Okay. Just play G6, knight D7, knight F6, castle, then after G3, play H5 or something. Play C6. Okay, knight C6 is a very strange move. I don't like it, knight E2. <laughs> oh, he's going for direct stuff, but D4, what's the point? D4, C5, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but I would not play like this. D3, you go bishop c3, yeah? So d4 played c5, knight e2. I don't, I don't like it. So knight c6 operation looks shady. Okay, maybe some miracle like c5, uh, knight e2, queen a5. Castle, do you want to take a2? Can you do that? Yeah, if castle I want to take. Okay, but now it's, yeah, just a mission that you do that. Now you play a Trompovsky like to tempi down. Two, at least. No, also your knight is misplaced. I mean, it should really just go to uh, g4 after some h5, h4. And, uh... Okay, h4 is h4? very strange move by white because I don't think white should play for kingside attack here because he has no ground whatsoever for doing it. You should just try to castle short and play b4, b5. <coughs> what? Is it a mouse slip or something? No, it's all part of his plan. Now that Leela suggests h4 in every single position, I'm always afraid to criticize it. But yeah, it looks random. Why is he doing this? Okay, maybe maybe it doesn't matter too much because black doesn't i mean i would still play knight c7 knight e8 knight f6 you know <laughs> just because i think this knight is absolutely horrible on e6 it just just it's not happening uh, just play knight c7 knight e8 knight f6 and... there he comes So instead of knight d7, knight f6, he would have played knight c6, knight b4, knight a6, knight c7, knight e6, knight c7, knight e8, knight f6. But maybe still in time. No, bishop e6 first. Uh, what is this? So he wants some queen b3, b5? Yeah. I don't know what to do now, just make some random move. t -Mac is saying Hussars are Polish cavalry winged horsemen. Thank you. West is saying Swidler is getting tilted. No, not yet. I think he looks very focused, but of course, he's no longer cruising. Yeah. <coughs> I don't know, it's very kind of unusual structure. I mean, not very, but kind of. And I don't know what to really suggest. Uh, Rook B1 makes some sense. I don't know. It's... Ah, okay, so that's kind of reasonable. At uh, least now we recognize the structure again. Yeah. Yeah, it's very unpleasant for Black, I think. Mm. Mm. I don't know. Now, B5, I guess, is quite strong. Maybe Knight C5 is strong. Let's see if I've played. I like b5 better. This structure doesn't look as horrible for black after knight c5 bc. I, I mean, it will depend heavily on whether you manage to break with some timely b6 because otherwise you just 
just suffer and suffer and lose uh, eventually, I guess. Because White will exchange the bishops with bishop e2 at some point. Hmm. And, uh, okay, one. So much drama. Okay, so if he is preparing a, a sacrifice at some point. He you think he wants to take rook a1, rook a6? No, I guess he want, doesn't want to play too early, just play. Okay, just when I thought I understood what he's doing, and he does <laughs> completely different thing. So. D5. Okay, now. And now it gets very unclear. Maybe d6 now, and then knight a4. Queen c3, that's d7. I wouldn't, I would not consider d5. Freeing the bishop. And takes, takes. Mm. d6. Oops. This works, yeah? Why not? I don't see it. Yeah, rook takes, rook takes. Queen b7, maybe white is still equal, but it's no longer. No, but rook d2, I don't know. Mm -hmm. c6, mm -hmm. you have queen e3. Mm -hmm. I think white should maybe take and play knight b6 just to avoid uh, rook d2. That's very sad. He does take <laughs> rook d2, here we go. And what is his plan? Queen b3, cover z3, where you do bishop h6. I can even maybe play bishop f8, bishop d6. Well, it made a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Just to, then you can forget about this pawn queening. He goes bishop h6. So Hitler could be very close to winning the Pepe Cuenca and Divis Invitational here. Now yeah. that e3 is hanging, he's very active. Two does time is running out. Okay, he has king. F1 or G1? Queen A1 check. Okay, King G2. What? Ah, A1. Queen A1. Uh, he wins. Okay. This is it. King H2 Queen played. One, Queen E1, Bishop G2, Queen F2, Queen B8. I guess King H7. He wants Queen B7. B7. Oh, he goes to G7. Yeah. Queen B7, Bishop E3. And it's game over, no? And C6, F4. Might be six f4 plate yes this is the end congratulations okay. mr Swidler. yes six and a half four and a half what a match he should always have you commentate when he's playing i think that also gives him focus because he he respects you so much he doesn't want to look bad when he knows you're watching so yeah. peter Swidler wins the dbs and pepe invitational Thank you so much for joining us. Sasha, actually, let's try to get Peter on the line, maybe, no? <clears throat> I will try. Not sure if I will manage. But uh, what was the prizes in this tournament? Okay, they're not, not that big, but I think first gets 2,000 euros. Oh. So, <laughs> congrats to Peter. <clears throat> Ugh, I'm such an idiot with technology, unfortunately. Nah. Um, I think Peter will be talking in the Spanish stream, so we'll leave him to that. Thank you so much, Sasha. We will see you during the... Magnus Invitational. When does it start? It starts on Saturday, 4 p.m. my time. I'm not sure what that is in your time. I think it's only one hour difference. Ah, so Saturday, so it's the day after tomorrow. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so see you then. And just uh, one last thing I wanted to say. I just checked uh, what Engine has to say. And if Y does not play D5, he's more than plus two. And after d5, it's just 0, 40. So, yeah, so it was you were right. not a, a strange move, but also a very bad one. 
There you go. Okay. So Thanks a lot. You. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and we are done with this show. Congratulations to Peter Swidler for winning the Pep and DB's Invitational. If you want to hear him give his victory speech, switch to the Spanish show. I'm out. I will play Banter Blitz in the lovely language that is German in half an hour. If you want to challenge me, become a Chess24 Premium member. Go to chess24.com slash premium. If you use the code stay at home, you get 40% off at checkout. Also gives you the right, you know, to challenge all these top players that are now doing their Banter Blitz as the participants in the Magnus Invitational. Fabiano Caruana, I believe, is playing tomorrow night. Magnus will be playing and so on and so forth. So it is a good time to check out Chess24 and consider a premium membership. Also helps us staging all these events. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks so much to Alexander Grishuk for joining the action. Congrats, Peter. Congrats, Jan Krzysztof Duda. I'm out of here.